State Electricity Commission's Kiowa Hydroelectric Scheme is a major development to harness the water power resources of the Bogong High Plains in the Australian Alps. Water to drive the turbines is important to the hydro engineer. Just as important is the thick forest in the water catchment area. Damage to trees on steep mountain slopes could cause soil erosion and affect the supply of water for the power stations. A danger to forest areas is the phasmatid, belonging to the stick insect family. This is the insect which in recent years has developed into a plague in southeastern Australia. The phasmatid plague kills large areas of forest by defoliating the trees and, if not checked, whole forests could die. The strength of the plague is determined by egg sampling during the year prior to hatching of the eggs, which lie on the forest floor for 18 months before maturing. A square foot of sample is taken in the forest litter. The laboratory workers seek out their samples in the thick virgin bush, sometimes spending hours in Victoria's roughest bushland gathering the eggs so that the strength of the anticipated plague can be determined. When the litter from the forest floor has been gathered, sieving is necessary. Sieves of various sizes are used from the coarse type through the medium size to the very fine sieve, which retains the eggs and small pieces of forest litter. the State Electricity Commission has a well-equipped laboratory where various tests are carried out on the stick insect. The sample of litter containing the phasmatid eggs is brought into the laboratory for checking. A laboratory worker has a painstaking job in sorting out the tiny eggs from the litter. Placed in small crucibles, they are prepared for an important step in building up evidence of the anticipated plague. In the egg analysis laboratory, preparations are made for bleaching the eggs. Sodium hypochlorite is poured into the small dishes. From piles, eggs are poured into the chemical which will bleach the shells transparent so that the eggs can be readily classified into various groups. The chemical effect on the eggs takes place. Some change color, some float, Others sink to the bottom of the dish. All this tells a story to the laboratory worker. Before final inspection, the chemical solution is strained from the eggs. They are carefully washed to rid them of surplus chemicals. The treated eggs are inspected through a powerful microscope so that they can be classified. The groups are determined on color, embryonic insect development, the number of insects that are likely to hatch, and puncture of the walls of the egg by parasites which help control these insects. Egg classifications are healthy fully developed with embryo, healthy undeveloped, immature killed by parasites, dead embryo, dead diseased, and desiccated. The eggs are about two tenths of an inch long and one tenth of an inch in width. In the spring, some of the collected eggs are placed in cages in the forest to determine the hatching rate. Climatic conditions during the hatching of the eggs are recorded on this instrument called a thermohygrograph. Here is an insect about half an inch long which has just emerged from the egg with the shell still attached to one leg. Hatching rate data is recorded on the graph. Control work of the plague is not commenced until 10 days after hatching is complete. In the cages used for the development of population, the insects are carefully studied during development, which goes through five stages before an adult size of four inches in length is reached. The insects feed on leaves kept moist in jars of water. Measurement of their size is taken daily. The stick insect is a good example of perfect camouflage. From traps in the field, the excreta of the insect is examined and measured. This helps to determine the development of the plague. Tree 
trees are shaken to assist in building up information to determine plague numbers. The information compiled from all the various tests indicates that the plague presents a serious menace and requires artificial control. At the headquarters of the Kiowa administration, plans are made to spray the plague area from the air using a helicopter. Large aerial photographs show the infected areas and the SEC forestry officer briefs the pilots and ground observers on the operation. The pilots closely study the areas over which they must fly. The areas to be sprayed are divided into sectors, requiring about 10 loads of spray in each sector. Another phase of the operation swings into action. Field crews are busy filling balloons with hydrogen. Because of the thick canopy of trees, these balloons will serve as markers for the test work. The balloons are anchored above the treetops of the areas to be sprayed. The helicopter pilot can quickly identify the marker balloon and release the load of spray solution. Undergrowth has to be cleared away from under trees where large calico sheets for test purposes are laid to collect insects killed by the spray. Ten trees are selected over an area of five acres and three sheets are laid under each tree. The insects collected on the sheets gauge the intensity of the kill. Specially coated paper to check droplet sizes of spray are laid out. Preparations for the spraying campaign are now completed. In the early morning light, the helicopter and ground crew arrive at Big Hill, where a special helicopter landing pad has been prepared 3,500 feet above sea level. Flying conditions are stable. Early morning and the absence of wind make it ideal for spraying. These are the men on whom the campaign depends. Every man a specialist in his own particular job. Men on the landing pad and air crew all have a responsible job to do. Activity starts with a large fuel tanker backing in to fill the storage tanks. Every man playing his part in the knowledge that this operation has to be successful, otherwise large forest areas can be ruined. The spray to be used is a 1% solution of a special insecticide in 3 gallons of light diesel oil to each acre. Care is taken that the solution is thoroughly mixed. The landing pad crew tests the helicopter fuel to ensure that there is no water mixed with a high octane petrol. The rotor is checked. You can't be too sure on a job like this. The checking of the aircraft is complete and the pilot takes over the controls for the final test before takeoff. There are two hoppers for holding the spray solution, one on each side of the aircraft. Filling is arranged through one hopper only. The pilot refreshes his briefings on the location of areas to be sprayed. The rotor turns in the early morning light and on the first flight the helicopter lifts easily off the pad, carrying over 50 gallons of spray and up for 17 acres of forest. You have to be an experienced pilot to fly helicopters in this sort of country with steep gullies and high ridges that can cause sudden updrafts. Spraying is carried out along the contours and up and down the gullies using previously marked spurs and gullies as sector boundaries. Intense concentration by the pilot is necessary to spray 50 feet above the treetops in order to ensure that the rotor blade downdraft gets the spray thoroughly into the forest canopy. Each swathe of spray covers a 60 feet area. This is the Keoward water catchment, 140 square miles of forest land, which could all be menaced if the insects are not wiped out in the infected areas. After a number of flights from Big Hill Landing Pad, operations are moved to another location at Bogong, 2,200 feet above sea level. The maximum economic distance from Operation Pad to spray area is three and a half miles. Accuracy in mixing the spray solution is important, and data is carefully recorded. The ground crew is kept busy refilling the aircraft spray tanks and checking the helicopter. Observation points are important in a campaign such as this. Ground observers record the number of spray loads released in each sector. The observer is also a help to the pilot on aircraft safety as he flies over this rough bushland in the Australian Alps. A quick 
turnaround of the aircraft in the spraying operation is necessary to take advantage of safe flying conditions. There is not much rest for the pilots as they change over every two or four flights, depending on the time the aircraft has been in the air. The tanks holding the 50 gallons of spray have been filled. Spray jets are checked to ensure even distribution for maximum coverage over the forest areas. The helicopter can spray in very tight corners and it makes a thorough job of reaching the insects below by forcing the spray downwards with the draft of its rotor. 420 loads of spray during a period of 25 days will be necessary to deposit 21,000 gallons of the liquid over 7,000 acres of forest in this fight against the phasmatid. Marker balloons enable the field crews to quickly locate the test sections of the campaign. The special cards placed at intervals in the spray areas are collected to evaluate the density and droplet size of the spray. The large test sheets placed in the spray areas before the campaign are inspected and the excreta of the insects, known as frass, is collected to give an indication of the decrease in population of the stick insects. is taken to the forestry laboratory where small quantities are carefully weighed. This is another check on the success of the spraying operation. Daily checking on population decrease is carried out and graphs tell the story of the reduction of the insect plague. The result of the spraying is a 98% kill. The test sheets in the forest are covered with dead stick insects killed by the spray. Over 200 insects are on this sheet, measuring 4 feet square. Field crews collect the dead insects for examination in the laboratory. The spraying has dispelled the menace, perhaps for years. But there is always the possibility of a future plague. And in the laboratory at Kiwar, the work goes on of sorting the dead insects into sizes and sexes, and checking the ratio of males to females to determine whether spraying is carried out at the right time in the life cycle of the phasmatid. For in some future summer, it may be necessary once again to wage war against this destructive insect to protect the Kiowa hydroelectric scheme. This great engineering complex of reservoirs, pipelines and power stations built to serve Victoria for generations to come. Man, with modern science, has won a victory over an enemy from the insect world. But constant vigilance will be needed to safeguard the natural resources of forest and mountain streams in this area that is so vital to Victoria.